Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is the third video of the series, and here we'll see the importance of converting to phaser, and we'll discuss example 9.6 and solve practice problem 9.6. So just to recall, we have learned that to convert from cosine to sine, that is s to s, s to s, we have to uh, use positive sign, same sign. Uh, and from sine to cosine we have to use negative 90 so just like here cos omega t to convert cos omega t into sine omega t we have to add 90 degree and to convert sine omega t into cosine omega t we have to subtract minus 90 degree now generally we will be in this chapter we will be using this mostly so remember that from sine to cosine minus 90 degree then we come to the uh, uh, concept of negative value. So negative cos omega t, if you want to convert this into positive cos omega t, then we have to add 180 degrees or we have to subtract 180 degrees. So minus cos omega t will be cos omega t plus minus 180 degree. And similarly, minus sine omega t will be sine omega t plus minus 180 degree. And finally, if you want to convert a sinusoidal signal into phasor domain, then you have to make sure that it is a cosine signal, not sine signal. If it is a sine signal, then we have to convert into cosine signal by using this one. So anyway, when it is in cosine form, then we will just write the magnitude and we'll write the angle and that will become the phasor value. So let's see example 9.6. Here we have uh, I1 given and I2 given and we have to add them to find their sum. And this is where we realize the importance of phasor that instead of sinusoidally adding them which is slightly complicated, uh, we convert into phasor and easily add them and then go back into time domain. So let's see that. So this signal I1 is already in cosine form. So from here you can see if it is in cosine form, then we just write the magnitude and angle. So we write 4 and angle 30 for phasor. So phasor I1 is 4 and angle 30. And part 2 is in sine. So uh, we have to convert sine into cosine. And as we discussed that we have to add minus 90 degree with this. So minus 90 added, sine becomes cosine and simplifying. So this is now in cosine form, this form. So 5 is the magnitude and angle is minus 110. So phasor I2 is 5, angle minus 110. Now we have the two phases. So to find the sum of them, uh, we are saying that if the time domain signal I1 and I2 they are, uh, uh, let's say they are equal to i, then the phasor domain will also be equal to phasor i, uh, the summation of i1 and i2. So we write the phasor values and then uh, we have to add them and for addition uh, you can use your calculator in complex mode to do it directly, but the best way from learning point of view is that we convert the polar into rectangular form first and then add. So converting first part into rectangular form, similarly second part into rectangular form and adding the real and imaginary parts, so the real part and the imaginary part. So this is the final value in rectangular form. But we have to convert them into polar form to go into the time domain. So converting into polar form, this becomes the magnitude and this is the angle. And now from here we can convert into time domain. So it will be this magnitude 3.218 cos omega t and minus the angle that is given. So this is example 9.6. Practice problem is also exactly similar. So let's do we have to add these two voltages. V1 is given here now this has two uh, problems one is it is negative another is it is in sine form so first of all let's take care of the negative 
so we have learned that for uh, negative to positive we have to add or subtract 180 degree generally common practice is to add 180 degree so life becomes a little simpler so we'll add uh, 180 degree to convert negative sign into positive simplifying we get this answer now from sine to cosine we have learned that we just need to add minus 90 with this so minus 90 will convert the sine into cosine so in cosine form this is the final answer now from here we can easily convert into phasor form the magnitude and the angle so v1 phasor will be 10 angle 60 degree and similarly v2 now v2 is already in cosine form so all we have to do is just pick this value magnitude 20 angle 45 so this is v2 now the summation of the two we just add the two polar form converting into rectangular form adding the real part and the imaginary part so this is the value and we convert this into polar form so this is the polar value and from here we can easily go to the time domain this will be the magnitude and this is angle from here we are going to the time domain so our answer will be 29.77 cos omega t plus this angle so i hope you have been able to follow this and you can solve this type of question easily thank you